Welcome back. You know, we have a friend of ours and no stranger to the 700 Club Canada, Sarah Chaudhry, and she is an Olympian. And today is the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. Go Canada! Woo! <laughs> Woo <-hoo>. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's so good to see you back. I mean, you have had so many things happen in your life. And uh, <laughs> and to add to that, now you're a mama. I am, yes. yeah. How's that? Woo! That's oh better than the goodness. opening ceremonies. Yes, it is. Uh, baby Zoe was born on February 5th of oh, this year. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. February 5th, Coming up Zoe, in six months. life, God kind of life. Amen. That's why we chose that name, actually. Oh, yep. my goodness. Yep. You know, when you look at uh, today being the opening ceremonies, does that give you sort of like uh, just sort of like a flashback and you think about when you were there? Tell us a little bit about your history in, in the Olympics and, and how many you competed in and exactly. Uh, I, I, everyone knows with your height that you weren't necessarily <laughs> uh, in, <laughs> in some of those smaller sports, but you were rowing. <laughs> yes. Are you calling me large? <laughs> no, I said you're tall, beautiful. Oh, thank you. You know, not very many people I can look eye to eye at, right? So you're one of those, and I, uh, I count that a, uh, a, a, a true great blessing. Prayer. It is a yeah. blessing. Tell us a little bit. Yeah, well, um, God certainly did bless me with the height that I needed for rowing, uh, but I didn't come into sports uh, kind of by my own design. Mm. Uh, when I went to school at the University of Victoria for my undergrad, um, I hadn't really been involved in sport. I'd been uh, really into music, and I was hoping to be a rock star Ooh. and write and perform Ooh. my own music. Share Chaudhry uh, with the Rolling Stones. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but God totally turned that around, and yeah. I didn't get into the music program. Ooh. And uh, so I was there at school, and I thought, I really want to try a varsity sport. Hmm. And rowing was the only varsity sport that you could try out for with no experience. Okay. <laughs> so that's how I got started, and out of, I think, over 200 women showed up for the first uh, novice meeting, hmm. and the first um, round of selection was based just on height and weight. So oh my goodness. at six is, feet tall, I made it through. Is there is there a specific standard that you have to have to be a roar as far as the most uh, operative, you know, strength, size, and everything else for distribution? Yeah, well, I raced in an open or heavyweight category. Um, so there's just heavyweight and lightweight. Hmm. Um, lightweight's only about 123 pounds for women. So that was off the table. Yeah. Um, but rowing's really a leverage game. So you've got this big or and you want to get it out as far as you can so that it travels the longest distance through the water so yes. it does favor tall people mm -hmm. um, and also strong people that can uh, maximize that leverage and uh, but there's no real standard you know for how heavy or how yeah. tall because it's just an open open well, weight when category. you see yourself and you pe you see people like silk and lamen mm -hmm. you know historically you're really uh, tall females and you you say wow it must be a you know something to this because you as Olympians have uh, been successful in this. And uh, tell us your first Olympic experience. What was it like? Yeah, so the first time I made the team was in 2008 and the Olympics were in Beijing. So it was just a totally over the top Olympics, uh, no holds barred. The opening <laughs> ceremonies were amazing. Apparently on TV, maybe they photoshopped some extra fireworks in, but oh. I can tell you that in real life, they were absolutely amazing. Beijing, huh? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, but at the Olympics, actually, the rowing venue, um, and this often happens, is usually quite far away because you need um, a lake or a fair rowing conditions. And they yeah. had a man made course, actually. So we were about an, a whole hour outside of Beijing, oh my. staying in our own hotel. Um, so we were very, uh, I guess, lucky that we were able to really focus on just our sport. So it yeah. felt very surreal. Like, you couldn't believe. I remember watching the Olympics on TV and watching some sprinters and thinking, oh my goodness, they must be so nervous. Yeah. I could never do that. And yeah. I'm like, I'm here. Yeah. I'm like eating breakfast. <laughs> like I'm going to race. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in this. We're doing this. That so. is so cool. Yeah. Now, were you a, a believer when you were in the Olympics? I was, yes. But uh, my story really involves God uh, just using that daily grind to really bring me back to him. And by the time I'd left university, I really didn't have much of my faith left. I had a lot of questions. I was really searching. I was ready to let everything go. But I remember I just had one day where I was just on the beach at night. And I just said, like, God, I need to know if you exist. And I just yeah. felt that his presence was there mm. and that I couldn't let go. But that was all that I really had left. Yeah. And when I got to London, which is where the National Training Center is, um, a Christian teammate invited me to come to church. And I started going to church regularly again. 
And then, believe it or not, the newspaper stopped coming in the morning in time for me to read it before practice. And so I started reading my Bible again. Oh my. Um, and, and I started treating my faith a lot more like I was treating training, um, writing things down and keeping a prayer journal yeah. and um, adding some discipline to my faith. And that made a huge difference you for know, me. I, I so get that. You know, <laughs> so many times I feel like I'm, you know, this kind of freak in, in space because <laughs> ever since I was small, I can remember always training and always having, yeah. you know, seasons, mm -hmm. in, and se in a season, out of a season. Mm -hmm. So I, I also brought the same regimen. What have you learned about Christ and the journey? Because, you know, so many people are looking at these Olympic athletes. Mm -hmm. And just like yourself, mm -hmm. you know, we're wondering, do they have a faith? Mm -hmm. I, I remember G Greg Luganis, he said, I spent so much of my life going after this goal that there was nothing yeah. else after that. Yeah. What have you learned with your journey? Well, for me, the journey's had a lot of ups and downs. And mm. in 2008, um, our team was fourth by, I think it was 0.76 of a second. So wow. there were three boats all within that margin and it was just beep, 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 beep. Yeah. And we were fourth. And People wanted to talk to me about how I overcame my disappointment. Mm. And at first I was really upset that they were calling that performance a disappointment. Wow. And it took me a long time to accept that people relate to disappointment and they want to know that because they are struggling with disappointment. Right. And so a huge thing that God taught me then through the next four years was owning your whole story. Um, and I'd have to say Hebrews 12 verse 2 says that Jesus is the author yeah. and perfecter of our faith. And it's really his story yeah. that he's writing through us. Yeah. Um, and, but that was a really hard thing for me to accept. And then over the next four years after 2008, I went back to school. I got a master's degree in occupational therapy uh, because I really felt I needed to work on something outside of sport. Yeah. And when I went back to make a bid for the 2012 games, I fell just short in about May um, at, the, at the end of selection. And I didn't make the team the year that my teammates won a silver medal in oh, 2012. Wow. You know, so many times, <laughs> you, you know, that, that can be the one that the fish that got away. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people are looking at that. How do you get out of the rear view mirror of something like that that says, that should have been my medal? Yeah. Well, again, he's the author and perfecter of our faith and yeah. he uses things like that um, just to bring us closer to him. And it was really hard to swallow because I'd trained for four years yes. thinking, what if the team wins a medal next time and I didn't try? I'm always gonna wonder if I could what have. If, what if, what if? And then here I was knowing that I, I couldn't have, that I, yeah. you know, I, I fell short, I wasn't fast enough. But, you know, we fall short in our lives all the time. Yeah. And I can see now how God has used every piece of my story to bring me um, into places where I'm able to speak, you know, to other athletes who yes. are facing disappointment. And by the time we see people on the podium, there is just a swath of people who haven't made it no. or who have made it, you know, almost to that level and fallen short. And yeah. really that's, that's the, the 0.01%, you yeah. know, but what about everyone else? And God's given me a real heart and compassion for, for people. And uh, I remember praying in um, 2010, I was feeling really uncomfortable with how um, kind of self-centered sport feels at times. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so single-minded. Yeah. And I prayed, my, my real cry in my heart was that God would show me his heart. Mm. And then all of a sudden things didn't start going my way and it felt like things were falling apart. But I think he, he brought me to knowing his heart. Wow. And that was, uh, you know, it says that that's, that's the sacrifice that the Lord wants is a, is a broken spirit and a, a contrite, contrite heart. heart. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Um, I could see how that contrite heart and that broken spirit, even with Zoe now, mm -hmm. your daughter, and the next chapters of your life, God has great things yeah. for you, Sarah. I'm always encouraged when I see you. Thank you for being here, especially on these, this opening ceremony. You are truly a champion. And you know, you might be wondering how is my story going to end? I love that God always writes a big finish. Mm -hmm. So don't just count it out when one chapter passes. Keep reading mm -hmm. because God is in it and there is no limit. If you need more prayer, one 855 Prayer partners are standing by. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.